KSJE and the Farmington Public Library present Quinto's Hana and Tales. Good afternoon, my name is Sierra Arietta and I work at the Farmington Public Library. Today I'm going to read you a few books about fall. The first book I'm going to read is called Little Elliot Fall Friends by Mike Curado. Little Elliot and his best friend Mouse loved living in the big city. But sometimes the city was too dirty, too loud, and too busy. We need a vacation, said Mouse. Later that morning, Elliot and Mouse boarded a bus bound for the country. They could see the bright autumn leaves as the big city slowly disappeared behind them. Elliot and Mouse got off the bus and smelled the fresh air. Wow, said Elliot, the country is even bigger than the city. I'll race you up that hill, said Mouse. At the top of the hill, Elliot and Mouse could feel the breeze and the sunshine and the soft grass. Neither spoke for a long time. Then Elliot's stomach growled. I'm getting hungry, he said. Looks like there are some apple trees down there, said Mouse. The country is delicious, said Elliot. And fun, said Mouse. Let's play hide and seek. First, Mouse found Elliot hiding in a hollow log. Then, Elliot found Mouse hiding in a pumpkin patch. Elliot picked the perfect hiding place. Mouse will never find me here, he thought. Elliot was right. He waited and waited, but Mouse never came. Where could Mouse be, Elliot thought. Everything was still, very still. Suddenly, Elliot smelled something delicious. Something that smells so good must be worth looking for, he thought. I found you, said Mouse, leaping from behind the pie. Mouse, said Elliot. When I couldn't find you, my new friends and I baked a pie, said Mouse. I told them you would follow your nose. Nobody knows me better, said Elliot. Later, they all gathered for a fall feast. To new friends, said Mouse, and to new treats, said Elliot. That night, Elliot and Mouse nestled into the hay and took turns naming the stars until they both fell fast asleep. The end. And that was Little Elliot Fall Friends by Mike Corrado. The next story I'm going to read is called Fall Mixed Up by Bob Raxka. Every September, every October, fall fills my senses with scenes to remember. Apples turn orange, pumpkins turn red, leaves float up into blue skies overhead. Bears gather nuts, geese hibernate, squirrels fly south in big figure eights, scarecrows stand guard over candy corn sprouts, milkweed pods open and monarchs fly out. Touchdowns are hit, home runs are kicked, kids leap in great heaping piles of sticks. Hats cover hands, gloves cover ears, Bonfires cool off our fronts and our rears. Warm apple syrup, baked maple seeds, and caramel pumpkin taste yummy indeed. Wolves say meow, and black cats say hoo. Horned owls howl at the full moon. Howoo! Mummies go bats, vampires ride brooms, Tightly wrapped witches escape from their tombs. Neighbors give stuffing and drumsticks for treats. Families give thanks for a bounty of sweets. Can this be fall? Close, but not quite. Go back and find all the things that aren't right. And that was called Fall Mixed Up by Bob Raxka. The next story I'm going to read is called Bella's Fall Coat by Lynn Plord. Bella was little, but not as little as she used to be. Graham's tisk tisk. You're going to burst your buttons, girl. It's time for a new coat. 
Bella shook her head. No, Grams, this coat is my favorite. You made it for me, and I want to wear it forever. Bella Marie, nothing lasts forever. Winter will be here soon. But whoosh, Bella was already outside. Bella twirled and whirled. She crinkled and crackled. She dove down deep and pop popped back up. When Grams jangled the lunch bell, Bella burst into the kitchen. Eek! Grandma screamed. A leaf monster! Bella giggled. It's just me, Grams. Fall leaves are my favorite. Let's keep them forever. Well, I know a way we can keep them for a little while, said Grams. After lunch, Graham said, Now, Bella, about that coat. But whiz, Bella was already outside. She stretched and reached. She picked and plucked. She crunched and munched. Grams, my coat has pockets big enough for a whole tree of apples, said Bella. Can we make an apple pie? My favorite. Hmm, said Grams. I'm sure we can make something with these. After supper, with warm apple tarts for dessert, Grams tried once more. Your coat, Bella, it... But zoom! Bella was already outside. She sneaked and snooped. She honked and whistled. She flapped and flew. Oh, dear, said Grams. I'm afraid these wings have flapped their last flap. I was flying away with geese. I wish they could stay forever, said Bella. But can you fix my coat? Let's see what I can do, said Grams. But now it's time for you to get ready for bed. Grams tucked Bella in tight. The little girl, who wasn't quite so little, fell asleep and dreamed of her favorites. Bright orange leaves, crisp, juicy apples, and soft white feathers. Meanwhile, Graham snipped and clipped. She pushed and pulled. She whirred and snored. The next morning, Bella awoke, her eyes filled with white flakes. The first snow, said Bella. Can I go out and play in it? Not in your old coat, you can't, said Grams. You couldn't fix it, Bella said, her eyes filling with tears. No, kitten, I'm afraid you're going to have to wear this one instead. Bella slipped it on. She twirled and whirled. She stretched and flapped. She even found surprises in the deep, deep pockets. Grams, this is my new favorite coat. Thank you. I will wear it forever. Bella saw her old coat drooping on a chair, sad and lonely. She picked it up. Grams asked, where are you going with, but swoosh, Bella was already outside. That coat fits her perfectly, said Grams. Of course, said Bella, it's her favorite, as she put it on the snowman. And that was Bella's Falls Coat by Lynn Plord. The next book I'm going to read is called Fall is for School by Robert Newbecker. Fall is time for school. That is really uncool. Fall is here. It's time for school. The summer's in the past. I'm staying here. I will not go. Vacation went too fast. Fall is time for turning leaves. The weather's growing cool. Fall is here. Come on with me. It's time to go to school. School is really not my thing. You go on alone. I'll be fine all by myself sitting here at home. Let's go and meet your teacher. You're going to look so nice. Tuck in your shirt and tie your shoes. You must take my advice. Teacher, teacher, sister, no. I do not think that I can go. In school, we'll learn of Romans, who really were no dummies, and the pyramids in Egypt all filled up with mummies. Dinosaurs and carnivores, mighty ty Tyrannosaurus, giant tigers, woolly mammoths were really, really enormous. I'm going to play all day. It doesn't matter what you say. 
Recess is for playing games. We'll run and jump and climb. Let's go right now and join the fun. You really must not whine. Whine. Do your numbers one, two, three. Add, subtract, and multiply. A million, trillion, my, oh my! Count the stars up in the sky. I do not like arithmetic. It hurts my eyes. It makes me sick. I will not go. I do not care. I have heard enough. To tell the truth, I'm not like you. School is just too tough. Rocket ships that fly to Mars, music, sports, and art. These are all the things you love. I think you're very smart. We will learn to read and write the stories we will tell. And if you want to do it right, you have to learn to spell. Fall is time for parties for spooky Halloween. We'll dress up just like zombies and paint our faces green. In science, we will never stop until we ace the pumpkin drop. Pumpkin drop. Pumpkin drop. We pad them up and drop them. It's really engineering. If your pumpkin doesn't smash, the teacher will be cheering. Is that something I can do? And everyone is going. Staying home day after day was getting kind of boring. Fall is time for school. We'll learn and we'll be clever. A great big world will open up and change our lives forever. Maybe school will be all right. I might just reconsider. Maybe you are not so dumb for my baby sister. Fall is time for school. School is full of awesome. The world is mighty cool. It's an amazing universe. Fall is time for school, and that book is "Fall Is for School" by Robert Newbecker. The next book that I'm going to read is called "By the Light of the Harvest Moon" by Harriet Ziefert. The harvest moon shines tonight. Everyone is still at work on Apple Hill Farm. The corn is ripe since late summer, and the men and boys carry the last of it in burlap bags to the corn crib. Around midnight, one weary farmer crosses the road and walks slowly toward his house. He will try to sleep through the harvest moon still shines bright. The cows and the sheep stand very still. They stare up at the orange-yellow ball. Which floats at the bottom of the sky like a big round balloon. The animals talk to the moon, but she does not answer their low moos and high-pitched baas. The wind speaks softly at first, then louder. Swish, swish. She del- delivers gustly blasts of air over the fields of farmhouse. Orange, yellow, and crimson leaves swirl and twirl and dance in the sky until a cloud of leaves settles in the pumpkin patch. When the gusts subside, leaf people emerge from the pile. First come grown-ups, then come children, and then pets. The leaf people find a clearing and begin decorating tables with maple leaf placemats. Golden mums and pumpkin centerpieces. Shh! Hurry before the children return," says a mother in a red dress. While the grown-ups prepare, the children play on a nearby hillside. They bob for apples, juggle acorns, string popcorn necklaces, and weave wreaths of gold and rust-colored leaves. The best game of all is stacking pumpkins," one boy says. I can stack stack six pumpkins. I can stack ten. Boasts another. Watch that it doesn't topple over. Warns a child. Too late. All the pumpkins roll down, down, down the hill. Catch them! Stop them! The children shout. They chase the runaway pumpkins down, down, down the hill, right into the middle. Of a party, a dessert party, 
Surprise! Sing the mothers and fathers, aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas. A grandma gathers the children around. Today is the autumnal equinox. The hours of daylight and darkness are equal, and fall begins. Fruits, vegetables, and grains are harvested. Leaves turn the colors of jewels, and we get to eat pie. Everyone laughs, then they feast on the sweetest treats from the fall harvest: pumpkin, apple, pear, and pecan pies. Under the light of the moon, a daddy raises his glass of cider and toasts the new season. When the last bite of pie is eaten, the leaf people pack everything up, join hands, and wait. Hold on, children. There is still fun to be had. The moon closes its eyes and goes to sleep, but the wind awakens from its slumber and delivers gusty blasts of air. Swish, swish. The wind blows the leaf people out of the clearing, out of the pumpkin patch, and into the crisp moonlight night. The next morning, the sun shines on Apple Hill Farm. The farmer is in the farmhouse. The cows and sheep are in the barn. The leaves are in the pumpkin patch. Everything is in its place. If you look carefully, you will know the leaf people were there. And that was by the light of the harvest moon by Harriet Zeffert. And again, thank you for letting me read these stories to you. I work at the Farmington Public Library. These books are available for checkout. You can also visit our website at www.infoway.org for more information on books or events that are coming up. This has been Quintos Hana and Tales, presented by the Farmington Public Library and KSJE 90.9 FM.